All right. I should hopefully be live, and if anybody is listening or paying attention, if I can get a sound check, and you can let me know if you can hear me, and it, specifically if you can hear me over the game. As I give it a little bit of time for somebody to, to get here. Just doing. I need to turn the mic up a little bit. Okay. Let's see. Is that any better? Can you hear me better now? Hey, DK. A little bit better. Uh, let me mess with my gain just a little bit. Hey, Jim. And hi, John. Um, is it that my volume is not good enough, or is it that the game sounds are too loud? Faye. A few moments later. <laughs> yes, a few moments later, I actually got to uh, starting the, the stream and the game. Um, I will let you all know that I have not played this game all the way through. I did start it uh, and do a little bit of it just so that I would see if I enjoyed it and if it was worthwhile streaming. Um, and the, I started streaming or, or playing through it and I'm like, wow, this is um, very, very Lovecraft uh, and film noir and Cthulian and um, I just, I, I find it really interesting. Okay, I will do that, Jim. Thank you. So, my volume sounds to be good. Should I turn the game sound down a little bit more? Desktop sound? I can do that. Let me do this. Okay. All right. Here we go, then. I don't know. Well... That's not helpful to you guys, because it's not actually showing the game. Aha. Uh -huh. Well, we'll restart this in just a second, so you guys can actually see the start of the game. Yeah, that's where it is. So I'm going to uh, go through this and then restart. All right. Um, I find Cthulian mythos uh, fascinating. I am not like super huge into Lovecraft. Also, my little VTuber thing is not properly calibrated this time for whatever reason. Uh, hi, hi, Riv. I have a little icon. Yep, look at me go, and and she's wearing a little like Cthulian hat. Yep. Yep, yep. Because uh, I thought it was amusing. In fact, I might make her a little bit bigger here because I just think that she's uh, cute and, you know, deal with it. 
it it's a shark hat actually because I couldn't get a, a squid hat. Uh, I do not know how to to do that. So um, let's see if we can get over to the correct. There we go. You guys. Oh no no. Let's see. Well, it does not want to adjust. So, you know, you guys just get to, to deal with her there. And she's actually in uh, the, the background is Miss Moore's castle. But, you know. Oops. This is not actually a custom model. This is a model that is made through animes, through their personas. So, yeah, but it's a little, uh, it's a little hat, and I thought it was super cute, and, uh, uh, Revald, who is Ronan, is totally recognizing the, hopefully he's totally recognizing the little evil bunny of doom from EverQuest that's on the hoodie that she's wearing. So, uh, here we go. Um, there's a cutscene right at the beginning, and I'm going to be quiet so that you guys can watch the cutscene with me. So, here we go. Um, this is Frosty Welcome. Dear Mr. Charles Reed, as you requested, I've researched the outburst of outbursts of hysteria and visions in the city of Oakmont, Massachusetts. It turns out that your assumptions were correct. Such cases are indeed more frequent here. Men and women from across the country are drawn to Oakmont, haunted by visions similar to yours, a city drowning, the presence of something great yet unknown. As luck has it, I believe we have stumbled upon the source of your ailment and the person who might help you with it. Prepare yourself, then come to Oakmont as soon as you can. I will meet you here to help you on your way. Cordially, Johannes Vanderberg. All right, so that's our entry video, and that was my introduction to uh, the game, and immediately I saw some interesting things. Um, so for those of you who don't know, um, Lovecraft lived from 1890 to 1937. Um, he wrote like sci-fi, fantasy, horror, um, but he was best known, or is best known now, for his Cthulian mythos, and that's kind of what this game takes place in. Um, if you can't see, 
basically, if you think of tentacle horror, you're usually thinking of Cthulian mythos. Um, and one of the things that I think is super interesting in this game so far is how it starts you almost automatically with that, that image um, that you get. Um, Lovecraft really was focused on um, this cosmic perspective um, and he was focused on a decline in civilization. Um, and, uh, like science, he focused heavily on New England, which is where we're at, obviously, and that is kind of considered Lovecraft co country. Um, and this, like, anti-idealism and the gaps in human knowledge and this sense of being insignificant and alone, and you kind of capture all of that in that intro section that we got right there. Hope I never have to use it. But something tells me I will. Um, the Cthulian mythos is also heavily oriented with both uh, space and the ocean, which were both kind of the unknown. And yes, I have to configure my Nightbot gem. I have not done much to to configure it so far. Um, this is the letter that I already read that we got from Johannes Vanderberg. Holding camera. Um, and Cthulian mythos is very squid and octopus oriented tentacles. Um, it's also interesting that the ship that we are on is called the Charon or the Charon, um, which is the, uh, in, in Greek or Roman mythology is kind of like the, the way you go to hell. Never trust a tourist advertisement. Monolith National Park. And there's a lot of like... 20s kind of movie posters and things like that that we're seeing here. And you can kind of see. Um, we also already know our character is in the Navy because when he opened up that chest, he was it was a Navy chest. Creepy. Looks like an eye. Now get out. At last, Mr. Charles Reed. What a pleasure to finally meet you in the flesh. Nice to meet you. Johannes Vanderberg, at your service. I did promise to meet you the moment you arrived. Ah, much obliged, Mr. Vanderberg. I guess I didn't expect you to mean so literally. Please call me your Hannes. But where are my manners? Welcome to the proud city of Oakmont. Alas, now is not its finest hour, though it is its most important. an eye-catching suit. Thank you, Mr. Reed. A mere flood is no excuse for one to abandon one's style. I take it you're a big fan of yellow. Well, I have a particular weakness for it. Call it a personal quirk. But reaching Oakmont is no easy task. Most maps I've found didn't mark it, and this rickety packet ship is the only one that sailed here. Why is that? Oakmont is no ordinary place. Its unique geographical position and the flood, a recent natural disaster, make it nigh impossible to reach. But you made it, Mr. Reed. I'm sure the tides of fate would have brought you here one way or another. Tell me about the 
this flood. It began six months ago. Storms raged for several weeks, and the water has risen ever higher without the sea. Now the city is cut off from the mainland. I must say I rather like it, despite the inconvenience. Atmosphere, you know? You said you know someone who can help me with my problem. The visions have been getting worse. Such vividness of dreams is not uncommon here in Oklahoma. By chance, the man I spoke of, Robert Throgmorton, is already at the port. He is dedicating a lot of time and effort to investigate the city. Alas, I fear he has a more pressing matter on his hands. How can I find Mr. Throgmorton? Don't worry, you can't miss him. Throgmorton tends to <coughs> stand out from the crowd. Can you tell me a little about Mr. Throgmorton? A remarkable creature. Scion of a robust bloodline, a philanthropist, a scholar, and a patron of the famous Oakmont University. A man of great ambitions and even greater ego. Do not make him wait. I don't need a place to lay my head while I'm here. Any recommendations? Fear not. I've already feathered a nest for you. There's a room in your name at the Devil's Leap Hotel. Take the key. Sounds... Don't judge a book by its cover, Mr. Keene. How do you fill your days, Mr. Vanderbilt? I host a philosophy club for the like-minded intelligentsia, gathering seeds of thought like moss drawn to a flame. Does Oakmont really have much of a market for philosophy these days? There is no consciousness without pain, Mr. Keene. No better moment for clarity than times are What's the best way to get around Oakmont? I'd like to drop my things at the hotel. Most locals go by foot or by boat. I've got the latter sorted for you. There's one waiting outside the port. Oh, you're too kind, your highness. Will you steer me towards the Devil's Leap? Take this map. I've marked the hotel and a few other details here. Other places? Like what? You're a private eye, yes? Well, I've highlighted station, city archive, newspaper, places you'll need to get to. This city is insolent, its ways mysterious. No one will take you by the hand, so you'd better know where to turn in search of a key. Well, that's it for now, I think. Thanks for helping me get my bearings. No, no. The pleasure was mine, Mr. Keene. Oh, before you go... How can I get in touch with you later? Don't worry about that. I'm the kind of man who finds you. So, from the get-go, we have a ton of stuff. Um, a couple warnings for you guys. This game does not steer away from one of the most controversial aspects of... Um, Lovecraft, which is that he was extremely racist and xenophobic. Um, so that will be part of what I discuss. Um, a little bit more uh, about Lovecraft. Um, he was born to wealth and aristocracy um, and actually never had to take care of himself his entire life. He was actually always taken care of uh, by other people. Um, he ended up pretty poor. Um, he wasn't really popular during his time period. He was considered more of a pulp writer. Um, and it was only actually when he was kind of rediscovered during the 1970s that he really became considered one of the major supernatural horror writers in American history. Um, and he's, like I said, he's a complex character. He was uh, extremely racist. He was ethnocentric. Um, he was a child of privilege and was raised in wealth. Uh, doors were open for him that weren't open to a lot of people. So classism and racism are intertwined um, in his works and in his writings. And you're going to see some of that shown here. Um, and 
he's actually relevant today. And this is interesting kind of from the perspective of when this game was made, because you see a lot of the views that Lovecraft um, had at the time reflected today. So you can see anti-immigration um, ideals uh, looking down on, on slang and less formal language and instead wanting to have kind of a, a national language. Um, there are uh, references to people of color and sp specifically Lovecraft was known for making references to black Americans as animalistic and as apes. Um, there was a lot of anti-Semitism. So there is some, they don't shy away from that in this game. And I'm not exactly sure currently how I feel about what I've seen, but I'm very early in the story that I've gone through and we'll see together. Um, but they don't, they don't hide it. Um, the other thing that Lovecraft thought is he was classist. Uh, so for instance, he thought that amateur writing was superior to writing that you had to be paid for or that you had to do to make mar uh, money. Um, and that's because he came from one, from money. Um, so, you know, it's, it's very interesting and it's, he's public domain right now. Um, which is another reason you see a lot of people writing about him. So let's get to playing. There are lots of, of references that we're going to see here to more than one of his works. Game is nigh. It will begin again. What is down comes up. The seed is sown. Oh yeah, he would he would definitely have been um, a four chan ship poster. Like, and he, so Lovecraft's attitudes did shift over time. Um, but he, he was never what could be described as not racist his entire time. Um, well, it's, uh, it's been in public domain for a while. And part of that is also because he just didn't have an estate to, um, to, to keep his copyright claims going, Jim. So, um, he was raised, uh, so his father died from syphilis, um, went mad and died, um, from syphilis and his mother, uh, took care of him and his mother took care of him using the money that was from his grandparents. Um, his grandparents were wealthy, but then his grandfather's businesses started to tank, uh, and fail. And then he still had money, still had wealth. Um, so he was still earning, you know, his mom was still earning income on his grandparents' estate. Um, but it was uh, not nearly as much as he'd been used to, right? He didn't have servants taking care of him and stuff like that. Um, and his mom kind of kept him under her thumb and he experienced... Uh, a lot of issues with mental health, as did his mom. I honestly suspect from what I've read that his mom probably had syphilis as well. Uh, she ended up dying um, and, and having to having mental health issues and kind of going insane later as well. Um, one of the interesting things here, by the way, is that they said, you know, this is a flood, right? The waters just keep raising and raising. But we're seeing deep sea fish and we're seeing like coral and stuff that would be on the bottom of the ocean everywhere here, which doesn't make sense if it was just a flood, if the water was just rising. Titania. So Titania and Oberon, they're fairies uh, from the fairy king and queen from like Celtic kind of mythology. Um, and you also see them a lot in Shakespeare's Midsummer Night's Dream. 
I so manly? Um, Albert Throgmorton's will. I hope someone finds this. My name is Albert Throgmorton, and this is my will. I want to warn you, don't go to the depths below Oakmonts. There's unreadable. We should have never done that. Everything should have remained in that cave. Professor, unreadable. I fear what will become of me. It's singing in my brain, dancing on my eyelids every time I close my eyes. Unreadable. The cycle goes on and on and on and on and on and on and on. Unreadable. In the end, it comes. I must warn everyone. I must tell my father. Unreadable. He's here. You like it here, newcomer? Well, get used to it. No one leaves Oakmont nowadays. So we've got two things here. Innsmouthers is a reference that um, is to Lovecraft's actual works. Um, Innsmouth is one of the places that he wrote about. And then this idea that you can't leave or that things are inescapable, right? Um, so I talked about how Lovecraft, you know, his his mom um, kind of kept close tabs on him. He tried to join the military, but his mom basically prevented him from doing that. Um, she, she said she would use all of her powers and connections to keep him out of the military. Hi, creepy little squid octopus monster. Um, and I don't know what these are, other than creepy little things. Um, and then he did eventually get married. He married, um, and somebody, a woman who came from money who also worked, and then she took care of him. Um, and then they had an amicable divorce and he moved in with his um his aunts and they took care of him so he was never independent but the healthiest times in his life were when he actually was living with his wife i don't care about your pretty excuses no one leaves the port until my son is found and that is final <clears throat> uh, excuse me Robert Throgmorton? I am, but not interested. Go away. My name's Charles Reed. I'm a private investigator. Just arrived from Boston. I was told you might be able to help me. Private investigator, you say? Well, perhaps we can help each other. Please forgive the question, but I've never met a man quite like you before. That's because no man measures up to the Throckmorton minions. Proud and powerful blood flows through our veins. My father united with a certain royal family, which has blessed all our offspring with these exquisite creatures. Turned up the game sound a little bit. I've heard you're the man to speak to about visions, outbreaks of hysteria. I'm trying to get to the bottom of it myself. Another newcomer with another problem. <laughs> yes, I know what you speak of. Can I ask you a few questions? How dare you? My son Albert is missing, and no one in this Innsmouth or Ridden City will do a damn thing. But yes, let's talk about your dreams. If I may ask, what happened to your son? Why do you care? What's your angle, outsider? Well, like I said, I'm a PI. Finding people is kind of my specialty. Is it? Well, Albert was part of a deep sea expedition I commissioned. This useless fool over here says he found Albert washed ashore in a lifeboat. 
says he was barely conscious, out of his mind, talking gibberish in some other language. It even tried to bite him. You don't believe him. Complete malarkey. I know my Albert. I raised him strong and smart, the best of his kind. It couldn't have been him. Albert's disappearance is the work of Innsmouthers. Mark my words. I take it you're not the biggest fan of these Innsmouthers. Those fish faced freaks have overrun this city since the police burned Innsmouth to the ground. Now, those filthy migrants occupy half this damn city. The port, Grimhaven Bay, Salvation Harbor, the shells. They are everywhere. So they're just refugees? <laughs> Hardly. They've taken work from the local fishermen. They stir and agitate against us, the Throgmorton family. We are the pillar of this community, not to mention that crime rates have skyrocketed. Simply speaking, they are a big stinking pile of trouble. Mr. Throgmorton. I can help you. I'm rather good at tracking down missing people. I'll find Albert. What makes you think you can do it? Oakmont is not exactly friendly to new arrivals. Let's just say I tend to see things that others miss. And anyway, what have you got to lose? Sounds like you could use every man we can get. Fair enough. You have a point, newcomer. Sorry, did you just say Vera? What does that mean? You had better get used to the Oakmont dialect, outsider. That is, if you want to fit in. It is a fascinating blend. Vera means fine. I was saying, we have a deal. I see. Thank you. So see right there, you can see the reference to the the language and accepting the language. Um, and John is mentioning that there's um, a Lovecraft story about a family that made it with apes. Um, I need to know more about what happened to Albert. Tell me, did you not listen at all? Well, I already told you everything. After leaving on the expedition, Albert was found on the shore in the lifeboat this fisherman supposedly brought him to the house and then left to call me. But when I arrived here, my son was nowhere to be seen. Anything else? Clearly, something suspicious occurred inside the house. I suggest you stop dawdling and go see for yourself. Where's the house where this all happened? For Kay's sake, I thought you were a private eye was standing right in front of it. You mentioned the lifeboat. Is it still around? Yes. Face the house, then to the left is a beach that borders a fence. You'll find it there. As much as I'm enjoying the weather, Mr. Throgmorton, it's time for me to get started. Find my son, newcomer, and be quick about it. And you can also see his xenophobia, right? Newcomer, outsider, you know. Um, the Innsmouther uh, story is also about uh, xenophobia, and it's about um, a fear of people basically, uh, quote-unquote, tainting their bloodlines by marrying uh, Pacific Islanders if I recall correctly. Um. Some other things to, to note too about Lovecraft is that he had an impact on like modern authors. Uh, for instance, Stephen King attributes him as one of his major influences um, and Joyce Carol Oates as well. He's seen as kind of a literary writer, which is very fascinating given the fact that he was a pulp writer at the time um, and he had a big resurgence in 2005 uh, due to um, a big volume of his works being published by the Library of America 
uh, which kind of fits the timeline of um, a bunch of different works, different games, you know, The Call of Cthulhu's, uh, Sinking City, uh, even most recently the, the latest um, edition of, or the latest season of Sabrina, right? The last season of Sabrina focused on this Cthulian mythos. And the interesting thing about the Cthulian mythos is that uh, for Lovecraft, his fear was the fear of the unknown, right? So unlike the, the person who kind of um, inspired Lovecraft, which was Blackwood, Lovecraft was, it was an intangible, uh, or an intangible. It was something that was so big and cosmic and unknowable that you really couldn't define it. So he left a lot of his horror as undefined, or we couldn't know, we couldn't, humans couldn't know and understand the horrors that were out there that were coming, and this overarching sense of dread. And that's what you see with a lot of his works. And, and that idea is really one of the things that still resonates today, is the, this fear of unknown and the fear of what's coming. It was actually his contemporaries. He had a, a circle of people um, that all discussed his works and things like that. And after he passed away, they actually took his uh, Cthulian mythos and they turned around and started to solidify it. And they, um, they started to define it and define his elder gods and things like that. Um, which was not something that he had himself. And I have no idea why my little model is looking off to the side like that, but you know, whatever. Yeah, Clive Barker and Guillermo del Toro as well. There's a lot of people who've been inspired by Lovecraft. Um, and uh, again, he suffered from mental illness his entire life. Um, so there's a lot to deal with like depression and dreariness and this inescapable anxiety and again you see that in this this setting that we're in right which was in the 20s um it's set in that like 20s era i've said everything i know We already visited the boat, so we're going inside. So see how there's coral and barnacles? These don't make sense if the, f the water's flooding up. There's something that we don't understand going on here. It would take tremendous effort to move this thing, let alone tossing it over like this. Huh. Let's see what you find, newcomer. There was a fierce fight here, but someone tried to flee. Told him everything. That's okay. I'm Charles Reed, private eye. Mr. Throgmorton hired me to find his son. Oh, oh okay. What do you want? I want to know what happened here. Every detail. I don't remember much. Me, Paul, and Lewis. We were here. This is our house. Barry was outside on his business. When he came back carrying Throgmorton's son, he was unconscious, barely breathing. Barry left again to call Mr. Robert. Then what? They took the guy in Lewis's room, and he started to make these horrible sounds, and I can't... My head began to burst, and he woke up, and after that, I don't remember a thing, just dreams. Drowned streets, a sleeping giant, 
voice that called me. Ah. Yeah, that sounds familiar. Tell me about yourself. Uh, name's Will. Will Hammond. I'm a fisherman. We all are. Live here together. Me, poor fella Paul, Barry, and Innsmouth and Lewis Flint. We moved here after the flood. I worked on the railroad, but the rail ain't kicking anymore, so I started fishing. Whether that or star. What is this K you keep mentioning? Outsiders show some respect. K is our Lord, our light, our love. Sorry. All the other guys. Uh, that's Paul there on the floor. K be with him. Barry's outside with Mr. Throgmorton. Lots of guys could risk everything. And I have no idea what Lewis or Throgmorton's son got to. Sons are suspect the worst. Do you know how Paul died? I don't know. When I pulled myself together, he was already gone. Mercy on my soul. I'll leave you to it. Take care of yourself, Will. Please, Detective, sir, tell me the truth. Could it be me? Did I kill Paul? Or did I kill him? I don't know yet, Will. And the police will stop anyone coming in or out of here, so I suggest you just try and get some rest. I'm afraid of what I might dream. So this is not a very nice place to live, and uh, thank you, Kenny. Um, but you can see how they have like quilts on their blanket or on their bed, and they've got some warm light in here. Oh. Oh no. I can barely recognize the face of the poor fella. He was beaten to a pulp. Poor Paul. Poor, poor Paul. I'm surprised they don't have someone's portrait here. Also, we're hearing some whispers in here. Mouther looks like. So the Innsmouthers uh, are fish people, right? So that's what an Innsmouther looks like. Seems like Prohibition hasn't affected Oakmont too much. So Prohibition, again, it's another reference to kind of give us an idea, if you didn't get it before, of the time period. See the scales on the knife handle and the eyes. I've never seen knives like this before. Masterful work. Hi, Pauls. Hi, Gigi. Okay, so one of the things that we have in this is called Mind's Eye, and we don't know how, why we have the Mind's Eye, but this is, again, kind of a thing that you see in Cthulian mythos, um, which was not a Lovecraftian thing, but was added later by his contemporaries. It's actually more of a Blackwood thing, um, because for Lovecraft, he didn't actually believe in supernatural, really. Everything was of the natural world and science for him. It was other people who believed in the supernatural. So, um, what he just said there, um, 
was what uh, Albert was saying, because um, remember we're told that Albert said something, and that is actually um, in a language, and it's a little hard to translate exactly because unlike um, Tolkien, uh, there isn't a full language that Lovecraft wrote but he did write a language that is being spoken there and its translation is something along the lines of our our larva followers hey thank you josh um our larva followers or our lost followers lost one followers um are here now at the threshold don't sleep or stop sleeping or no sleeping um or here now at the gate something along those lines So now we have the ability to use our mind vision and we can use our mind vision to see what happened. Take this ape face. <laughs> see, there's our What? Happening. That's Will. Yeah, run. Okay. Let's see what we have here. So now we have to actually put them in order. Um so this is one. <gasps> And they came out here. Take this ape face. And then yeah, Albert pulled that Albert down. Frogmorton woke up. He was not himself. He attacked the fishermen, and his hysteria spread to them. When he got wounded, he fled. All right, and so now we have this mind place, and we can tie different pieces to of the evidence together, right? Um, so Albert returned unstable, and he attacked the the fisherman as soon as he became. Right, and so we put together a piece of the puzzle, and um, Lewis shot without warning. No. Nope. So let's see what else we can put together. Um, Lewis shot without warning and Albert. Nope. Nope. Okay. So these are our deductions, and I'll read them in just a second. So here are the Throgs Morton Innsmouth or feud. Um, and then Lewis shot without warning when he turned aggressive. Um, so as an Innsmouther, Lewis and his people suffered at the hands of the Throgmortons. That could be a reason to hate them. Um, Albert Throgmorton was dangerous and posed a threat to Lewis Flynn and his fellow fishermen. I mean, he killed Paul. Um, Albert spread hysteria around him, uh, with a psychic influence that made everybody suffer. So the only other clue we have is that he fled, um, and then you can see all these kind of clues that we have pulled up, these deductions. And then in lore, the only thing we have is just trophy plate with a strange fish. Looks very lifelike. Ugh. And then over here is the will that we already found in red. So now we're going to try to use our mind's eye. There was a fierce fight here, but someone tried to flee. <sighs> Mm -hmm. 
You have bullets. So the fishermen pursued Albert. Even let off a few shots. Oh. These things are so creepy. They're like kitty rat things with spider legs. That are hairless. And they chitter. So yeah, joy. The other thing about this is this is very film noir. So when they looked at the visual direction, they did a very film noir um, perspective. wasn't exaggerating when he said he raised him strong. Don't mind me, I'm just a little bit crazy now. Because I've been, you know, seeing all this violence violence and channeling my my mind vision what was that got jackets there's something in the pocket a blood-stained note. Lewis, please just give me one more week. I know I owe you, but I'm underwater like everyone else right now. I don't ha yet have enough to st stock to operate the bar smoothly with the fuzz snooping around the port. But don't worry, I've struck a nice deal with the proper people and should have a steady supply channel soon. Just one more week and I'll return everything with double interest. Peter. The blood is fresh. Whomever it belongs to could not have got far. These fish. Um, so that's another thing too about Lovecraft is that uh, he lived during the De Great Depression and during the First World War, which created a lot of uncertainty and had a major impact um, on a lot of people and changed the way they saw things. Uh oh. Uh oh. That's no accident. What? This was deliberate. Oh. Well, that's not creepy at all. That's, yeah, this is fine. Everything's fine. Everything's fine with that monster, right? Right? Oh. And is that a sperm whale, maybe? Lovely. In. Okay. Yep. Yeah, there's definitely some forest feels. Yep. All right, let's look at our clues. All right. Uh, Albert fled, so let's say... Lewis pursued Albert. Albert fled when wounded. Lewis may have wanted to kill Albert outright because he was a Throgmorton rather than just drive him off. Um, uh, 
Albert was mur murdered and Lewis left the crime scene now. Uh, so Lewis left the crime scene and the bar owner is indebted to Lewis. So um, Lewis might be hiding at the, the bar. And we got more information, which we've already read. So now we're going to go to the bar. Um, so I have a minor in film studies and I uh, did a lot of uh, studying around film noir and film noir is interesting because it is based um, around like the 20s it's based heavily on the pulp uh, fiction, like detective, hard-boiled detective novels that were written in like the 20s that would have been contemporary for Lovecraft, uh, like Dashiell Hammett. Um, if you've ever seen the, the Maltese Falcon, the Maltese Falcon is based on um, Dashiell Hammett's work of the same title. Um, and film noir has a lot of the same themes that you see in kind of... Lovecraftian work. Stay alert. Monsters lurk underground. They're everywhere. Oh, I'll miss the carpenter's food giveaway with this darn port closure. Closure. Oh, look at that. The port is closed by order of Robert Frogmore. Back off. The port is closed by order of Robert Frogmore. Back off. That's I didn't talk to this guy. You look familiar, but old Billy hasn't seen you around. Oh. Hey. Got a spare bullet, fella? I ain't eaten in days. Come closer, troubled soul. Let me tell you what your future holds. You're some kind of uh, fortune teller? Yes, my dear. Yes. Oh, it's so clear. Your path holds many surprises, newcomer. Well, tell me about it. Like what? Not so fast, newcomer. I see many things. For a small fee, I'll tell you some of them. All right, how much? A dollar? <laughs> Your money has no value here, newcomer. After the flood, Oakmonters deal in the practical. Booze, smokes, and bullets. And I'll make it easier for you. I don't smoke. Sure, tell me my Let's fortune. See what my future holds. Good. Let me focus. The sea will be generous in the coming days. Many gifts delivered, and many will regret partaking. I don't think I follow. I see old and new. A hard heart against an iron will. Whoever wins, you win too. But you'll only see that from inside a metal cage and and tall pillars circled by the dead. Monoliths, a maybe? Race from one to the next as time itself laughs. I think I'd like my bullet back. It is what it is. The truth will out soon. Me, I just caught an early glimpse. Ah, why do I feel like I got scammed? Eyes are a little large, I think. Um, so some of the aspects of film noir are like cynical heroes, right? The the PI, which is what our character is. Um, you see this stark lighting, right? Lots of shadows and fog. Um, existentialism. Right, so this dread of existence. Uh, 
flashbacks, um, which we already saw in our mind's eye, right? Um, moral ambiguity. Uh, usually there's a femme fatale. I don't know if we're going to have one of those. Um, there's also an attack on capitalism, which is something that actually we see Lovecraft have later on in his life. Um, again, as he gets more and more poor and as he lives through the Depression um, and he gets incredibly sick. He ends up dying from cancer, by the way. But Lovecraft himself um, was uh, turned, turned from being pro-capitalism um, to anti-capitalism. Um, and, and like towards the end of his life called himself, you know, a democratic socialist. Um, pessimism, right? This is a very pessimistic game. Uh, a disen disenchantment and disenfranchisement. Um, the collective fear and uncertainty. Uh, a narration, which we have. Um, alienation, tragic flaws in our main characters, and an overall disillusionment with society. So we see a lot of that in in the theme here. Also, see more of those scale pillars. Welcome to Under the Kill. We're your one. I've seen some unsettling creatures around, but nothing I've ever encountered. What are they? So you met a wild beast, newcomer. No one knows what they are, but consider yourself lucky to still be in one piece. They arrived in the flood. Some say they come from the sea. Others that they are Kay's punishment for us. And what do you say? If it bleeds, you can kill it. Keep your gun handy. And if you want to erase the memory, I sell a perfect cure right here. Remember. Better to be a coward and live than brave and dead. Unless you're a newcomer. Did, again, you can see that that xenophobia and that ethnocentrism. Um, so for Lovecraft, uh, it wasn't just uh, about racism. It was also, he was English American and for him, English American was the highest superiority. So um, anybody who was English American was good. And he looked down on, on all the, the immigrants uh, who were refugees, right? Um, so you had uh, not just people of color, right? But also you had, you know, the Irish, the Italian, etc. Um, those were also less than to him. I'm looking for a man by the name of Lewis Flynn. Any chances here? Yeah. Even if I knew, I don't rat to newcomers. As it happens, I know you owe a debt to Mr. Flynn. Trouble is, I found your note near the dead body of Albert Throgmorton, son of Robert. So, it seems Lewis is in trouble. Might have even come here to hide. But you hand him over. He won't be back to collect what you owe. Get me? Drock. That would explain the blood. Fine. If it gets me out of this mess, you can have him. So, he's upstairs. Here's the key. You gotta promise to deal with him once and for all. But save the shooting for outside, huh? Smart man. There's your good deed for the day. Some of that moral ambiguity, and we're just bye. Oh, what the get the oh, and again, more nets and um, seaweed and coral and stuff that should be way deep in the sea. And somebody's been play playing chess here. What are you doing? Uh, Charles Reed, private investigator. Mr. Throgmorton hired me to find his son, Albert, so I think you know why I'm here. Throg. That darn bartender. It was all that crazy ape's fault. You hear me? Calm down. I only want to speak. 
the now. You know, if you reach for your gun, you'll hit the floor faster than you can say poetic justice. I got nothing to hide. Start at the beginning. What happened? We, we, we were in our house, me, Paul, and Will. Mary'd gone to the sea. So I told him that it would only bring bad luck. If he'd listen to me, we'd all still be alive. Come on, Lewis. Focus. Right. Well, Barry dragged that damn ape to our house. He was bragging about how much Mr. Frog Morton would give us for saving his son. Well, that ape, he was out cold. Then woke in an instant and started screaming, attacking us. After that, can't remember a thing. He was shot to kill. No warning, no second chances. He pursued Albert even after he fled. Why? Uh, well, I can't remember it. When he woke, it was like a, a bloody mist descended over me. First thing I recall, after it was that darn warehouse and me covered in blood. I had no idea what happened, or I suspect it had something to do with that ape. Turns out, I was right. What kind of... Uh, why do you... Your face, it's... Uh... Oh, so you're here to attack me just because I look different to you? You want to spit on me, whisper to your friends? What's new? Uh, no, no, I'm sorry. I... I didn't know how to ask. I've just never met someone like you before. I didn't mean any offense. Ingen yeah, you did. Ingenauer's bodies were blessed by the sea. You're going to see a lot of us here, so you better get over it. We are proud of who we are. I hear there's a bit of a feud between the Innsmouthers and the Throgmortons. Care to fill me in? Those apes hated us from the moment we arrived at Oakmont. Our home was destroyed. We just needed a place to stay. The Blackwood Grand family sheltered us, but others were not as hospitable. We needed jobs, food, medicine. The city denied it all. And so? We had to fight for every crumb of bread. And those Throg Mortons in their high castle only made our life harder. Always conspiring behind our backs. Always setting people against us. I'd love to see them suffer like we suffered. It's a grand family. Um, for those who don't know, there's another organization that is full of racism that discusses grand families and uh, grand hierarchies. You mentioned a grand family. What do you mean? Newcomer with a gun. Answer the question. Okay. People here are crazy about bloodlines and tradition and reputation. The head honchos of Oakmont were called the Grand Families. There's the Carpenters, who control most of the city's underworld. The Blackwoods, who share kin with Innsmouthers through the Marsh family. And let me guess, the Throgmortons. Right. Those filthy apes. Now that most of the Blackwoods are gone, there's nobody left to protect us Innsmouthers. See? And yeah, he's he's definitely a fish person. You can see he's actually got, like, sharp teeth, and he's got double layer rows of teeth, almost like a shark. No, I am not banning, uh, Willikers. Not happening. Sorry. Sorry, not sorry. Uh, and... Marlon Brando is actually an interesting thing that you mentioned, because again, film noir, and so you can definitely see this noir feel, feel to this game. Uh, Josh, sorry, I, I, I like Gigi way, way more. She's my girl. The things you did to Albert don't look like a bloody rage. Fatal shot to the head, a hidden body. One might start to wonder if it was deliberate. I don't know what to say. I wasn't myself. I think I've got all I need. 
Please, Mr. Reed, don't tell Throgmorton about me. I know I'm in no position to ask. I didn't want to do whatever it is I did. Honest, have mercy, please. I have a family. Without me, they'll starve. This is not exactly cut and dry. I need some time to think. Drink it now, Josh. I can offer something to grease your grinds. I still have a few bullets on me. Bribery. This is also a noir trope. You think you're the first person to offer me a bribe? Please, Mr. Reed. Now, don't try my patience further, Mr. Flynn. All right. We've gotten all the evidence. So now, oh, that's not what I meant to do. Now we're going to go to our mind palace. Yeah, it is our mind palace. So now we have a choice that we can make. We can either decide that Lewis was aware of his actions, right? Psychic influence or not, Lewis was out to murder Albert Throgmorton. He had a motive too, the mutual hatred between Innsmouthers and the Throgmortons. I must tell Robert Throgmorton the truth and bring the murderer to justice. Or we can say that Lewis was under mental influence. Lewis killed Albert Throgmorton while under some sort of mental influence. He couldn't control his actions and thus can't be blamed for Albert's death. I could try and cover for him or else Robert Throgmorton will have his head. Um, so we're going to do this. Um, let's see. Okay, so now we have a poll, so you guys can pick which one, uh, which option I'm going to to pick here. Um, but some of the things that I want to kind of consider here is, um, can there really be a just justice in this situation, right? Um, in this city, we uh, we know that justice really isn't going to exist um, because Throgmorton has entire sections of the city shut down, even though people are starving, right? People have talked about how they're not going to be able to go out and get food um, from the free food giveaways, which is something that happened, by the way, during the Great Depression. Uh, they they can't go do that because Throgmorton has literally shut down the, the city access. Um, and he's not the mayor or anything else like that. He just wields his fiscal influence into monetary influence. Um, and so you have the police doing his bidding. Um, there's also something, you know, to be said about the choices and the decisions that the police make. So in this case, our character is the police. Um, and we are making decisions and the influence that is going to have on how justice does or does not unfold. Um, the other thing is, is that there's a huge prejudice towards outsiders and insmouthers. We saw that in the people that we were interacting with in the city as we went and um, interacted with people. And they talked about how insmouthers were stealing all the jobs, which quite honestly is, is something that we've heard uh, in our political discourse recently. Um, so go ahead and vote. and. Uh, I will, I will bug my Nightbot. I'll have to set up my Nightbot, and I'm going to check that poll in uh, just a few minutes. So if you want to check that or, or vote up there. What? You can't vote on the straw poll? Well...
Huh. Okay, well, I don't know why it it won't let you do that. So you guys just type it in chat. There's there's only there's like 13 viewers. I can go through chat. So um mentally affected, okay. So Jim wants mentally affected. Yeah, I I have no idea, Willikers, but I can look it up. So, uh, if you want to, if you want um, us to make sure that Lewis is mentally affected, to say that, say Lewis in chat. If you want us to say that Albert was murdered and that Lewis did it intentionally, say Albert in chat for me. So Manly, what's your pick? And I'm putting it on my list right now, Jim, to get my Nightbot. Right, so Manly, I know you're there. Don't make me send you a message in, in Discord. I know how to reach you. We do! We have ourselves a one to one, basically. I I I need Axie and I need So Manly to to give us some votes here. So Manly tried. I'm gonna have to go hunt him down, it looks like. Well, it depends on uh, what they picked, what Axie and So Manly picked, right? If they each voted on one side. I'm going to give it just a minute more. Uh, and and uh, I'm going to go fill up my glass with water while uh, I do that. I have to read it, Jim. We're voting on if if uh, we think that Lewis murdered uh, Albert, or if he was <laughs> yes, a few moments later, or if he was under the influence, uh, the mental hysteria influence. 
I gotta find my dice now, is that what we're saying? For a coin? That did not come through stream? I turned it up. Maybe it was just too soft because of the game music. Let's see. Did you hear that? Okay. Messed with a little bit of sound. Hopefully we'll see if that helps. I got a bad feeling about this. <laughs> All right. I need a coin. I don't have any coins in my bedroom. What? What? All right, let me go get a coin to flip to figure out what we're going to do since uh, So Manly is just being a real ultimate slacker. Here. All right, I'm back with a coin. So here we go. Heads, uh, Lewis is a murderer, and, and we take his head. And tails, um, he was under mental influence. All right. And let me recalibrate my, uh, camera. We landed on tails. So Lewis was under mental influence. And we just got to recalibrate the camera now that I'm sitting down again. So that she's not doing all kinds of super weird things. Eventually, you guys will be able to see my hands, too. All right. Please, I told you the truth, I swear. Let's head in. On that plate. Sausage and... I don't know what that is. Okay. I've seen more evidence of the 20s. All right. I'm coming for you, Throgmorton. Creepy rat things. Look at the rat cat monsters. Ugh. So we're going to ask Mr. him. Throgmorton, uh, I've encountered some I don't have all day. Some uh, unusual creatures. And they sure weren't friendly. You've seen a wild beast, Mr. Reed. I'm somewhat surprised to see you still alive. These unsettling things appeared after the flood. I've commissioned a few studies on them, but we know little more than when we started. 
They're aggressive, but fortunately, not immune to gunfire. Yeah, I learned that firsthand. Try to avoid them when possible. I don't know what you're talking about. I didn't use guns with them. Keep your weapons handy. I don't know if it's ethical to eat them. I mean, people are starving here, so I think it probably would be ethical, but at the same time, they're Cthulian horrors, so I really don't know that I would want to put a Cthulian horror in my mouth. And yes, he looks like he's coming from Planet of the Apes. Mr. Throgmorton, I'm afraid I have bad news. No. Yeah, I found your son in the basement of a nearby warehouse. I'm sorry, but he was murdered. Shot in the head and the body hidden. No. It cannot be true. No, no, no. I don't believe it. No. I've tracked down your son's murderer. Where? Who is he? Sci-fi fantasy troops. Yeah, Josh. So we are... The murderer is dead. Because we're not giving him Lewis's head. Because it didn't land on heads. I tracked the murderer down, but he was attacked by those... Things prowling in the back alleys. And they tore him apart. It was that Innsmouthed fisherman, Lewis. He was covered in your son's blood. That may have attracted the beasts. Are you certain the body is his? Beyond any doubt. All that's left of him is a heap of flesh and a scrap of cloth. It's from his jacket. His task is flight. Alas, this was my revenge to exact, not some wild beasts. Something must be done about those pests. Still, justice has been served. This isn't closure, but at least I know now the story. Thank you. Mr. Throg Morton. I hate to press you, but do you think you could help me now? I really don't think he hates to press him. Kill to think a newcomer barely off the boat solves a crime the police couldn't. But I digress. Remind me, what brought you to a boat? So again, this is interesting to me because here we have the influence of what the police say in this situation dictates you know, how justice, so-called justice, is actually served. Um, I'm not admitting any kind of weakness to Throgmorton. That seems like it's something he would exploit. I'm looking into an outbreak of erratic behavior and madness, all linked to shared visions of this place. Indeed. Then our goals align. This inexplicable hysteria has spread through a boat after the flood. I funded an expedition to explore recent geological activity that may be responsible. So the interesting thing about hysteria is hysteria was typically considered something that happened with women more than it happened with men. Um, and hyst hysterically, um, the, the cure for women, including this time period, uh, was was orgasms um doctors in fact got paid to to uh give women orgasms to quote unquote cure their hysteria do these cases of hysteria involve shared visions as well since the flood many of Bunters have had similar nightmares indeed professor doe the expedition leader complained of them herself waterlogged ruins with unnatural architecture a sleeping giant Around streets and a voice calling from the depths. Her words exactly. She proposed the expedition, desperately wanting to find the cause. Yep, the old hand cranked vibrators. Yep, that was totally a thing. A geological expedition. I'm not sure I follow, but I have reason to believe the flood and this madness are the same source. As above, so below. So I sent men to find out. You mentioned the flood. You think it's more than just a natural disaster. Have you looked around? What happened? We find scientific explanation. 
again, Lovecraft thought everything had a scientific explanation. So this is Lovecraftian, but it's not true Lovecraft. It's what basically the kind of Lovecraft contemporaries, the Lovecraft um, gang, his council kind of decided was Lovecraftian after he, he passed away. Has your expedition found anything? I do not know. Albert is... Albert was part of me. His passing cannot be coincidence. Why was he alone at the port? And where are the others? Do you think your son was killed because the expedition uncovered something? Is it so hard to believe? I had no news for a week that Albert, the only one I could trust, was ashore and is killed. It does sound suspicious. We have his will! I want you to find out what's going on. I expect you're as interested in the expedition's results as I am. Well, Hysteria was also um, linked to all kinds of things, right? It wasn't just actual, um, you know, women wanting orgasms. There were a series of, of things. Uh, if you were too headstrong, it was hysteria. And, you know, the answer was to just make sure you got more orgasms or to have you ride vibrating things. So, stuff like that. If I'm going to look into this, I'll need to know more. Where should I start? I'll give you the address of the expedition's headquarters and a key. That's all you can tell me? Let me be clear. Do not speak to me like that again. I'm sorry, Mr. Throckmorton. I'll just meant the more I know, the better. I am a busy man. I funded the research, but left all preparations to Professor Doe and Albert. When you've finished, come see me at the Throckmorton family manor. It's in Old Grove. Here, I'll show you. What about my expenses? They will be reimbursed after you complete your task. Of course, you've earned some compensation for your work here at the port. I'll also include a fair advance in bullets. Ah, uh, bullets? The dollar lost its use here, Mr. Lee. Again, the dollar lost its use in the Great Depression. Bullets mean more than bills. He leveled up. So, for skills... I'm going to do the one that gives me more experience and sanity. Let's see what we've got more. Mythos. We've got the the prophecy that we already saw. And casebook, we've got uh, the key. Look, Kenny, I told you. I, I go deep with the lore and history. I'm a nerd. You have been warned. Let's look at our map. Let's see if he's, uh, we can get through where he ordered clothes now. I really want to see what those birds look like.
Well, something just ate me. Lost at Sea, Robert Throgmorton funded an expedition to discover the origin of the mass hysteria gripping Oakmont. The expedition was to explore the seabed near Oakmont. Contact with the expedition was soon lost. Albert Throgmorton was the only known survivor. He was subsequently murdered. I was hired to find any other expedition members, dead or alive. Throgmorton will be waiting for my report in his manor in Southern Old Grove. Oh, hey, this is that photo from the intro. Crew of the Cyclops. Semper Fortis, brothers. Uh, another interesting thing about Lovecraft is Lovecraft, despite the fact that he was raised in a family that was re religious, um, or at least, you know, socially religious, Lovecraft actually, um, decided that he didn't believe in, um, a Christian pantheon, uh, at the same time, he basically said his parents he found out that Santa wasn't real and he basically said, well, Santa is fake. Uh, isn't God fake too? Um, and then he later actually fell in line believing in the, uh, Greek or Roman pantheon. So that's where you get the, the Sharon and the, um, the Olympians and all, all those references. My diary part one. I don't know what exactly sank the USS Cyclops. Only remember the screams and the metal creaking, water filling the deck, and my headache, the worst I've ever had. I found myself among the floating seaweed, drowning. A nearby piece of boat helped me survive and reach the shore of a small island. They found me on it later, starving, half mad, and babbling about the ancient ruins and their denizens. The official said none of what I thought I'd seen was real. But my memories are true. My strange powers, gained after that ordeal, prove it. I found something horrible on that island, something old and dark and slithering, and it still haunts me. A plea for help. Dear Mr. Reed, why does everybody know my name? I understand you were the private eye that caught the murderer in the port. My life is in danger and I cannot trust anyone in this city. Please come to my room, which is just opposite yours. I am in despair. My studies have drawn the attention of vile forces. They stalk me and will s will take me soon. I have cast my lot and am beyond saving, but the seven books must be saved at any cost. Even if I'm gone, find my notes there. This knowledge must not be lost, as it could be our kind's last hope for enlightenment. Please be the bearer of this light, for I have failed." Uh, seven is supposed to be a holy number, by the way, like the seven seals of Metatron, etc. Um, Charles W. Reed, three twenty one seventeen to ten nine ninety four. U.S. Navy. It's interesting. Uh, all that we see or seem is just a dream within a dream. Looks like his dog tags, maybe? Never again, they say. Laudanum, registered 1898. One dram, each six fluid ounces. Tincture of opium. Soothes all ailments. Add to any spirits or tonic. Devilfish Sons and Pharmacy Co. Abernathy Avenue in New York. No matter how much of this I chug down, the visions always return. Yep, laudanum. It was used for just about everything. Um, basically people used to, I can't drink the, the uh, laudanum, unfortunately, but people used to get dosed with opium all the time. But I can change outfits, so I can do wind coat. Uh, newcomer is what I have on right now. So I can do the, the wind coat. I can, I don't have gangster or king's robes yet. Um, I could do day wear. Uh, I don't have man of science or fisherman or police envoy. Oh, hey, plague doctor. 
Master Sleuth. Look at that uh, Sir Conan Doyle reference. The Cultist. Or the Fish Fianca. Um, daywear or wind coat? And while you guys tell me what to wear, let me do this. Dude, I love sushi. Do you get it like takeout or do you go to a restaurant um, with masks on or what are you what are you doing nowadays? <laughs> it's a it's a copy pasta. The heck did you just freaking say about me, you little turnip? You got a you got a big mouth. You know what? I'm gonna take that as a fucking compliment and hope to God that you weren't being facetious with that. You wanna go down on this? <laughs> I love that it clips the clip that I did earlier today for Kenny. Kenny earlier today, by the way, y'all was doing the uh, fluffy bunny challenge where you shove as many marshmallows as you can in your mouth. Um, and we waited approximately two mushroom or marshmallows in before we made him do 20 push-ups um, and dance using channel points because we are just, you know, the best. Mr. Reed, you were the rare example of a man who treated one of my kind humanely, and I feel I have to repay the debt to you. Take this piece of friendly piece of advice. Run, save your life, and leave this drock city to the depths. Don't dig into its secrets, for they are not worth it. There's nothing good left here. I believe you can find a way to escape. Please heed my words. Louis Flynn. We're the best of friends, Kenny. Don't, don't lie. We gave you comedy gold with that clip. Note from J. Vanderberg. Mr. Reed, it seems that you overexerted yourself while conducting the investigation for Mr. Throgmorton. Forgive me for the audacity, but I brought you to the Devil's Reef while you were unconscious. Please take more care of yourself in the future. I won't be there for you every time. Johannes. Are you stalking me, son? So I got one more shout out least. Let's do a shout out for Oh god, what? Whoa! Oh, oh, no. oh no! Oh fuck. <laughs> Dude, she got up! She got up! Oh shit! <laughs> Oh, sh <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Makes this place feel more like home. I miss Boston already. Okay. This is... The nightmares. I boarded up the windows and locked the doors. They are just men, the Yellow King's gang. They can't get me here now. Now there's only me. Me and these nightmares. A little longer and I'll figure them out. I wonder if Johannes is part of the Yellow Kings with his yellow suit. Ugh. So much for going back to normal, Jim. The Tome of the Mare. The fishermen talk of a place near the Blackwood Manor, on the southern part of Whisper Street, where meetings occur in the dead of night. The locals don't like this part of the eastern Grimhaven Bay, because they seem to fear those who gather near the half-built ships. They say a certain book is read at these meetings, a cursed tome that makes people so crave the sea's touch that they go and drown in the ocean. The one reading the book stands on the cursed boat that sinks in the fog. Those who touch it, who saw it touched the shore, have either gone mad or disappeared.
bewitched tome. The local legends may be more than mere superstition. A dozen witches were hanged on a huge apple tree that still grows near the cider mill. Among these documents is a confession. One of the witches said that the devil himself granted them a book with the words of power. This book hides itself from mortal eyes, waiting for the witches to be reborn and returned to claim it. The witch who wrote this confession lived in the eastern Reed Heights, somewhere north of the intersection of Communion Road and Museum Avenue. Could the book still be hidden there? The Wheel Tome. I had a dream so real, it still makes my hands shake. A huge Ferris wheel rose amidst the city. People got on and rode it higher and higher before jumping off at its peak. As the piles of corpses grew bigger, the crowd pushed me to the wheel. That sort of feels like what we're in to, to, today. Um, and then I saw a man with a leather bag. He was standing in the center of the wheel, reading from a book. His awful dirge was making the wheel rotate and dragging the crowd to their slaughter. Could this vision be real? I know there is a Ferris wheel at the park in the western Old Grove, near Century Avenue and Beacon Street, but where could the book be? Waiting book. Building the church was his redemption. Day after day he worked without payment, carrying stones and putting them in the moist soil of Salvation Harbor. Your favorite word there, Kenny. At night, when he returned to his house behind the church, he could not sleep. The book his ancestors brought across the ocean called. When the church was built, the priest found him hanged on the bell ropes, but the book is still waiting for someone to come and read it. His house is in Central Salvation Harbor, on the old church road, between Seven Oaks Street and Windheim Street. Still has a bad fame, and no one wants to live there, even after the flood. Gunpowder? The Hidden Book. It took a lot of effort to track down this book. After being stolen from the Throgmorton Museum, it was brought by a... It was bought by a local surgeon who was found dead in his house after the flood. I snuck in and checked out his place, but in vain. Still, there is somewhere else the tome may be. The private hospital in the Western Reed Heights where the surgeon worked has been abandoned. The archives say it is on Bourbon Road between Innsmouth Road and Oak Street. Tome in the Ruins Local women were talking about a ruined house in center... Coverside, near the radio tower on the crossing of Landing Avenue and Kingsport Street. They said the ghosts of the house owner and his family still read the unholy book they kept. Several newcomers who have tried to settle in those ruins have gone mad. Uh, hate to break it to you, Kenny, but this whole place is, uh, is moist. Book in the Bank Talking with locals is never easy, but this old chap was one of the queerest yet. He was happy to talk about the book, but only laughed when I proposed to buy it. I left it in the most guarded place of the city and paid enough to keep it there until the world ends. And if it is abandoned after the flood, even better. Ignorance is the best guardian. I'm guessing he meant the abandoned bank building on, on in Northern Advent, on Forefather Street between Heelog Street and Windhalf. Avenue. Alas, it would be too dangerous to go there myself. Nope, that's me back going backwards. Keep it down. Mr. Archer, I've seen you dragging things into your room. Mind the floors. I'll make you pay for any scratches you leave. Your landlord. So if Mr. Archer lives next to me. What's upstairs? Uh, well, that's an interesting picture. Finally, you're awake. Gotta tell you, though, Mr... You want to stay on here? You stop making all that noise.
Who so, are you? Uh, who are you again? You bang your head or something. I'm Victor Olmstead. I own the place. This place. The Devil's Reef Hotel. What noise is that making, dude? What, what noise are you talking about? I love my scarf. I expect my guests to be respectable. Moans, chanting, all that kind of thing. It stops, all right? He's an insmouther, it looks like. Um, also, moans in a hotel is probably a normal thing. I'm just saying. Got any proof it was me? It could have been one of my neighbors. I slept like a rock. I, I didn't hear a thing. Pfft, that's exactly what a newcomer would say. Your neighbors are respectable people and would never do such a thing. Don't think your yellow-clad patron means you get away with everything. You're not exactly friendly with your guests. Aren't they the ones keeping you in business? All these newcomers after the flood, they're stark raving mad. What do you mean? You can't imagine the crazy notes and books I find after they move out. Only Where do they move out to? For is lighting a kitchen stove. Can I have a look? I knew it. I tell you, no one sane would be interested. And you want to take a look? Well, fine, fine. Take what you wish. Oh. He just handed them to me. That's interesting. Um... Okay. Forlorn women, woman. This city, no matter how badly the flood damaged it, has an unnatural appeal. I can't stop myself from walking, even if it means being struck by further visions. I went to the eastern part of the Salvation Harbor, near the crossing of Fitz O'Callaghan Street, an old church road it came. The feeling of loneliness and fear was immense. I was a woman, locked in a room, infected and slowly rotting. My body turned into something. It itched badly in my face. I had to hold the skin with both hands to prevent it from growing until I suffocated. I ended up sitting on the road crying until some insmouther kicked me and ordered me away. That's interesting. Lone child. The visions are testing me, playing with my mind. My old forgotten fears come to life. When I was small, I was afraid to stay alone. I thought my parents would leave and never come back. Today, I went to the eastern streets of Coverside, and the visions came on the corner of St. Elmo Lane and Kingsport Street. I felt I was alone, forgotten in a locked room, hungry and frightened. It was so scary to stay inside, but everything was much worse behind the door. Something scratched in the corridor, and there was, were terrifying screams from outside. I could not run, could not hide. I just waited for Mom to return. So that's that anxiety, right? that um is lovecraftian mirrors mirrors i'm afraid someone stalks me it's it started when i visited western advent and had a vision of the intersection of purity road and oak street i saw mirrors full of reflections and some one trapped trying in vain to escape his expression of fear and panic shook me deeply after that a very tall and skinny man started following me in the distance what troubles me is that I see him in the reflections, but have never caught a straight view of the stalker. I'm sure the police will mock me if I come ask for asking for protection. Seems it is time to buy a good trustworthy gun and start to practice. Disgusting exaltation. No matter how different my visions may be, they are always so frightening. Today it was Today it was man. He left a house in Southern Old Grove on Warwick Street, somewhere between Seaside and Hillside Street. Our eyes met, and I immediately felt burning exaltation, a wild torrent of emotions. I saw him among the monstrosities, touching them, embracing, kissing. The vision was so intense, I bent in two and threw up all my breakfast. He walked past saying something like, cursed newcomers, and I prayed he would, wouldn't stop to help. Even now, when I close my eyes, I see the creatures around this man. 
back balls. All of the ocean. Tonight, the air forced me to leave the hotel. The putrid smell of rotting seaweed and fish made it hard to breathe. I remembered a huge apple tree and thought it may be nicer there. Moreover, I was afraid that the hotel owner would see my seizures. The visions occurred when I was a few blocks away from the apple tree, walking E. Brown Street in central shells. I felt like I was drowning. I ran forward... And when I passed the street of St. Michael's Church, I felt the water surrounding me, pressing, calling. I needed all my will to fight the desire, the desire to go to the mare and sink into its depths. Static in ears. I was walking the lumber street in eastern reed heights when it happened again it's not just a vision but a noise hissing radio static growing louder and louder voices from afar were lost in it crying desperately i tried not to show how bad it was i was afraid to reveal it to the locals the images came after i passed bullock street towards Heelog street the hissing flooded my mind and i saw a man surrounded by radios talking to them he was dying i felt it and when it happened the vision was gone Voices from the pipes. I'm afraid of the bathroom and kitchen sink. Each time I want to wash my hands, I tremble in fear. What if they'll talk to me? This began after a vision in Western Reed Heights, near the crossing of Eben, Ward, and Baker Streets. I saw a man, naked and covered in blood, in a room without doors or windows, surrounded by the dark holes of the pipes. He was cutting himself, piece by piece, feeding those copper mouths. They were whispering with voices so sweet and promising, but full of hunger and hatred. How could he even, how could he believe them? Could he even escape? And had they noticed me? Hi, Art Chick. Oh no, do you have power again? From behind. Uh, I can't help but turn around at any noise after what I saw yesterday. I walked down the Murdoch Avenue in Western Advent and near Oak Street I was hit with an excruciating migraine. My nose started to bleed and the visions came. I saw one man writing a letter and another about to strike him from behind. Somehow it was both the spectator and the sitting man. But no matter how I cried out warnings or tried to move, it didn't work. It seems I lost consciousness when the killer hit the man's head and it took me several hours to get back to the hotel after art chick um do you guys have power again yay i'm glad i'm glad to hear it it's too cold for you guys not to have power um terrible fetus oh this is gonna be good after this vision, I shake in fear at the sound of a child's cry. It happened in Western Reed Heights on Washington Street. I passed Eben Street and was headed towards Oak Street and saw it. The thing was running so fast I didn't even understand what it was. It jumped me from the window and the vision struck me immediately. I saw a man, a doctor, hiding in the room. He was writing something with a shaking fist, something like a last will. And then I saw the thing stalking him, a fetus on thinly, thin pointy legs with a little face full of evil and hatred. It's shrieking. I can't forget it. Okay, are we, we in the forest now? I feel like we're in, 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 in the forest now. Um, Innsmouther's Notes. The local Innsmouthers scare me a lot. I've never seen a place with so many ill people. Their faces pursue me, even in visions. Recently, I was in the northern part of Grimhaven Bay, walking down Whisper Street. I barely made it to Hubert Avenue when the, when the visions came. I stood among many Innsmouthers, disguised as one of them, and listened. Their leader read the story of a captain participating in pagan rites, copulating with savage wit witches and beasts, bringing sacrifices. I still remember his name, Obed. Lullaby Crossroad. Today I fell asleep on the street. I'm sure it connected to my vision somehow because I felt the same nausea and headache as before they strike. 
It happened in Coverside, near the corner of Tanner Street and Old Church Road. I felt dizzy and my mouth was full of bittersweet taste. Uh, I saw a woman with kind eyes giving me a drink and whispering something. Immediately after that, I fell asleep and spent nearly half the day lying in the dirt like a hobo. It's, no, it's a miracle no one stole anything from me. Pack of notes. Oh, this is just the me saying the hotel. So. And then we read all the, the tomes. Just three, six, seven. So we've got all those. Notes about the hobo signs. Darren, I think I'm finally starting to figure this out. Locals use sign to mark special places that you already you know already. Kind of like the secret signs hobos use all over the country. What I learned is that the tradition dates back to times well before the flood. I've been able to find out the meaning of some of them. You've seen the crooked H-shaped sign on doors around town. That means the house is inhabited. The crosshatch grid sign marks hidden caches of useful items. The V-shaped sign is for barricaded dangerous places. Good catch there, they say. Still haven't figured out the spiral-shaped sign, though. You'll have to investigate for yourself. And if you see the, a sign with a cross and three Ks, reach for the gun. To my dear nephew, my dear Victor, how is Oakmont treating you? Should you require any support, the Blackwoods will be happy to help you. I have arranged for that. Regarding your question, I don't know where Robert went, sadly, only that he did not stay in Innsmouth. Perhaps there is hope he didn't perish in that cursed raid. Take good care of the hotel, please. Plenty of our relatives were interested in the property, but you're still my favorite nephew. I know the Devil's Reef is in good hands. Kind regards, Aunt Portia. Another one of the um, major influences of, uh, by the way, there's the hash hashtag, um, of Lovecraft was Poe, obviously. And like I said, uh, Blackwood. Oh, we got some, some wood and boobies. more lore? What more lore do we have? Oh. With the ones that I already read. Where's the infested area? Oh. Can't get up there. It's right below me. And our boat is the Cyclops. So that's not where I need to go. Hmm. Well, aren't you special with your Cthulhu tentacle stick?
Pokemon Seaweed Tour. People seem so happy here. Can't you tell? How do you think I get into this area? It's the diner. Okay. Oh, more the creepy kitty cat thing. Monsters. The chitter. Oh, that's gross. He's he's vomiting up, but look at his backpack. Do you see all the body parts? And heads? What the what the hell? It's messed up, dude. I have no idea where I'm going. Oh! That's just great too. Everywhere I turn, people are just vomiting up everything. So, Eastern Salvation Harbor. But I would have to go down there. Get to that one. behind me. Oh! Oh! There's a giant thing there. Okay. Well, that's grand. Get to Salvation Harbor, which means we've got to go down the old Colony Street. to go to Old Salvation Road. fine. This is fine. This is just a standard flood, right? Nothing bad here. Oh, 
I'm barely moving here. And now all of a sudden I'm, you know, speeding right along. Oh boy, it's an infested area. This is gonna end beautifully, I'm sure. So we're going to Fitz O'Callaghan and Old Church. So where is Fitz O'Callaghan and Old Church? Where's Old Church? Okay, old church goes down here. All the way up here. Did I go just the complete wrong way? I did. I did go the complete wrong way. Well, back on the boat. Back on the boat, y'all. Going the wrong way again. Said I'm a nerd. Never said I was good at geography. Hooking me, mister. And another giant sperm whale, maybe? It's hard to tell. Or maybe it's just some kind of Cthulian monstrosity. Who the hell knows? Alright. It's O'Callaghan Street, up here. There is the forlorn woman somewhere here. Well, I don't see anything. Sorry, that was a hiccup. A few moments later. A few moments later, uh, I got lost again. Stop. Don't you tell me what to do, lady. Face. I ain't stopping nothing.
All right. There are some creepy people here. Oh, nope. Don't want to go into the water. Can I get on your little boat? All right. I have been streaming for about two hours. I've got 13 viewers. Um, I think you guys are awesome, but I'm going to go ahead and take a break and uh, pick the game back up soon. Um, yes, I've been hydrating. Thank you. I'm on my third glass of water. So, uh, let's see. Who do I want to raid? You know what? We're going to raid Grim's Hell because he's streaming right now. And I don't see a lot of other people streaming right now. So, let's raid Grim's Hellhound 12. Um, he's playing Devour. Uh, which is a hell of a lot of fun, in my opinion. I didn't think that I would like it, but I actually really like it a lot. Um, horror games. Uh, most of you guys who are here uh, know how to get in touch with me. If you enjoyed this, if you think I should keep playing and discussing the lore in this, please let me know. Um, I've got a billion games in my backlog, so I can totally pick up another game. Another game I will be picking up soon, by the way is uh red dead redemption um and i'm absolutely also going to be playing uh doing a stream about everquest and everquest 2 soon as well putting together some of those pieces uh so thank you for tuning in um i'm looking forward to playing more of the sinking city and knowing more stuff for you guys and uh have a good night I love you guys too. Thank you everybody who showed up. Kenny and Balls and Art and Axie and Jim and Willikers and Josh and John and Faye. Totally appreciate you. When I get 60 hours of stream time, we'll have some custom emotes uh, for, for followers.